Welcome, welcome. Good Tuesday morning. Tuesday mornings in the divine will. We are in the midst of our programming for Louisa and the foundation of the divine will. We are at lesson four of a total of six lessons. I think this is the first time I'm telling you that there are six lessons. And these were given back in uh, the year of 2018, May, and given by Father B. Thomas Celso, BDV. So without further delay, straight over to lesson four. Fiat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we're on page seven. We're almost halfway there. So by the next two hours, we'll get everything done, okay? All right. <laughs> all right, so Jesus is talking to Louisa about um, everything that he manifested to her. The preparation, the way, the means, the teachings, the light, the graces. Uh, so that the divine will may be regenerated. Again, that's a phrase that's used in the Latin, uh, the Latin Mass, the Trinitine Mass. Regenerated. That's one of the terms that was eliminated with the Norvis Ordo. Regenerated. Can you imagine? Uh, it's, it's, it's like having a new, you lose your arm and your arm comes back. Everything's going to come back. And Jesus says it's going to come back as if Adam did not sin. That's what's going to be. Imagine, if Adam did not sin, that means we did not sin. That's what it means. We're repairing and redoing everything in the divine will. Everything's being repaired. Everything's being redone. When, when, when Louisa was dying, she said to Jesus, I'm sorry, she says, that I did not always live in the divine will. I'm sorry for my worry, my fear, my anxiety, my complaints, my negativity. She didn't have negativity. Jesus says, Louisa, you never... We're out of the divine will. You will always live in the divine will. Everything has been regenerated. Everything has been repaired. And, and all that you said you worried about, he says, these were the questions of the people who would read the volumes. So when we are reading the volumes, every question that we have will be answered by Jesus. We put Louisa through torture and Jesus allowed that, that all those doubts, all those worries, all those fears, all those anxieties, all those complaints were, were given to Louisa so Jesus could answer us. And that's why he says very, very clearly that what he wants is he wants to free us of everything, to be perfect. And see, there's only a few of us around that are perfect. No, no, I'm sorry. I... There was, there, was, there was one guy, he did it really well. He got the, there's only a few of us that are, uh, shut up. What are you so anyways, so here's Jesus is going to regenerate. This is what God wants. If this were not to occur, listen to this. If I couldn't regenerate, if I couldn't redo everything, I would not have manifested so much to you, Louisa, nor would I have kept you sacrificed in a, in, in a bed for such a long time in order to place in you, listen to this, the foundations of the regeneration of my divine will in yours and therefore to keep you in continuous exercise within my will. Do you think that my continuous being within you, feeding you my prayer? See, that's what the, that's what the Echo book is about. Making you feel, my, and that's what the rounds book are about. Making you feel my pains, which together with me acquired another value, other divine effects, another divine power. Is nothing? I, Jesus, could say that I am. He, he loves using his name. Making the first statue, the first soul of the regeneration of my divine will in Louisa. Then it can, shall be easier to form copies. Okay, so we're doing this bust of Louisa, and we're going to laser it, 
Okay, we're going to get this lasered, which means you're going to receive an exact duplicate, large, medium, or small, whatever you want, 30%, 60%, or 100%. God is going to, this is just, it's going to be, it's, it's not a regeneration. It's, it's an exact copy. But regeneration is to be what God planned, to be in God's image and likeness. Uh, this is just so... And then we are called to be the copies of whom? Jesus and Mary? No. The copies of Louisa, who possesses Jesus and Mary. If we go to Jesus and Mary directly without Louisa, we will become another saint, like St. Louis de Montfort or St. Maximilian Colby or St. Bernard. We'll be great saints, but it won't be living in the divine will. You God is asking us to be copies of Louisa. This is why I, God, always say to you, be attentive. And it's the same thing. Read. For this is about something too great. It's about the most important thing that exists in heaven and on earth. It is about rescuing the rights of our divine will, about giving back to the triune God the purpose of creation, about returning to the triune God all the glory for which all things were made, about making us triune God pour out all the graces which our divine will had established to give to his children. Had they fulfilled our divine will in everything. It's, this is infinite treasures infinite blessings that God has planned. It's like when, when, the, when, the, when the Lord went up to the angels, he tilted the top of the angels. This is a huge, infinite bucket. And he tilted it. He says, I want to show you something. He tilted it, and it showed the virgin would give, would give birth to the child. And that's when Lucifer said, I will not serve this virgin. I will not, I will not obey. God said, okay. <laughs> he just tilted it back. This is infinite graces that the angels have never seen. The angels have never seen this. The angels have no idea. When, when Jesus died on the cross, they had no idea he was going to do this. And yet he redeemed us. And now he gives to this one here, Louisa, a share in divinity. That drop of water that the priest puts in the chalice filled with wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ. This is what he gave to Louisa. That prayer has been answered by one person so far, Louisa. And God is saying to us, I want you to possess this gift. Uh, again, this is astonishing. He says very clearly, he says, uh, feeding you my prayer, making you feel my pains, which together with me acquire another value, another fact, another power is nothing. I could say that I am making the first statue, uh, the first soul of the regeneration of my divine will in Louisa. And then it shall be easier to form copies. That's us. This is why I always say to you, be attentive, read for this is about something too great and the most important thing which can exist in heaven and on earth. It is about rescuing the rights of the divine will, about giving back to us, triune God, the purpose of a creation, about returning to us, triune God, all the glory for which all things were made, and about making us, triune God, pour out all the graces in which our divine will had established to give back to souls uh, everything uh, as if they had fulfilled our divine will in everything. This is what God's doing. By 18, 128, 26, the whole creation, including man, came out of the eternal creator as their source of life, in which they were to be preserved only with the life of the divine will. See, uh, we were supposed to live without sin. We were not supposed to know anything about evil. Nothing. We are only supposed to know about God. That's when Lucifer uh, seduced Eve and said, you know, you will become gods if you eat of the tree. Such a lie. We were to be preserved only with the divine life of the divine will. 
Everything was to be founded upon it. The foundation of the divine will was to preserve all things as beautiful and noble, just as it had come out of God. Nothing evil. Can you imagine? Never an evil thought, never an evil word, never an evil thing done. We were to be pure. See, this is why Our Lady of America has asked that the children of America bring purity to the world. It's the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary. In fact, all created things are just as they were created. None of them has lost anything of its origin. Only mankind lost the divine life, the divine foundation, and therefore mankind lost his divine nobility, the divine strength, and the divine likeness to his creator. See, when... See, Jesus is ready. He redeemed mankind. Why? To live like this? No. To enter into divinity. To share in divinity. And that's why, was it two years ago, uh, the book came out, uh, uh, How to Become Children of God. And it's talking about divinization, what the church has always taught. Divinization. This is not anything that is uh, foreign to the Catholic Church. I mean, the priest says it every day at Holy Mass. May we share in the divinity by putting that drop of water into the chalice. But in spite of this, my divine will did not leave mankind completely, unable to still be his source of life and the foundation that would sustain him because he himself had withdrawn from the divine will. The divine will offered itself as medicine so that he might not perish completely. So my divine will is medicine. My divine will is sanctity. My divine will is preservation. My divine will is food. My divine will is life. My divine will is the fullness of highest sanctity. Now, what we are praying for is that first bread, the bread of the divine will. We want to eat of this food. Uh, We saw in the Old Testament... Uh, the manna from heaven. We have seen in the New Testament the, the second bread, the super substantial bread of the Holy Eucharist. The third bread was in the Old Testament. The second bread is in redemption. And now Jesus is preparing for us the first bread, the bread of the divine will. This is what we're, this is what we're beginning to eat. Where do we find this bread? From Jesus. As he speaks to Louisa. He says to Louisa, there will be a time when you will not be receiving Holy Communion. And Louisa lamented. And he says, Louisa, to receive me for 15 minutes until the host dissolves in a mystical way is one way. He says, but I'm asking you to receive me in a divine manner. And and, and this is the, the bread of heaven. And this is a perennial communion, not, not just a communion for 15 minutes. I, I mentioned this before. I, I was talking to Cardinal Burke about this. And I said, I said, the divine, I'm reading this to him, the divine will is greater than the Eucharist. And he goes, what? What? <laughs> he goes, let me see that. So I showed it to him. I said, well, this is for you. And it's true. It's not that God be, can be greater than God. But the perennial communion, we walk and talk with God in the cool of the evening as Adam did. Never to be separated from God. We are in a, we, the Holy Church has Holy Mass and and you, you, you receive Holy Communion. It's the final blessing, the final prayer, and it's over. Why? The church does not want to interfere with your communion. And what do people do? They go into fellowship. They go into loud noise. They, they walk out of the church. It's no. This is the time for us in the divine will to kneel and to adore God and to praise God and to love God and to glorify God and to worship God. To enter into that 15 minutes where we are alone with Jesus in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. This is what God is waiting for. This is what God is is asking for. Okay, so we continue. I have lost where I was. Okay. The fruits, thank you. The fruits of my holy divine will. See, one of the reasons why, see, everything in the divine will is just filled with such delight. It's filled with such beauty. 
that as you begin to read the divine will, everything that you read is so important. That's why, you know, in, in putting one of these things together, it, it's, it's kind of difficult because there's so much. And, and everything is important. And to narrow it down to, to one uh, theme is, is difficult. But as you can see, it's so magnificent of what God is doing. Okay, so the fruits of my divine will. This is what Jesus says, be fruitful and multiply. Shall certainly come in order to desire the fruits. One, that's us, must know how precious they are. The good that these fruits bring. The riches that they produce. Here is the reason then for the many manifestations of my divine will which I have made to you, Louisa. In fact, knowledge shall bring the desire to eat it. See, that's what we want, this first bread. We want the bread of the divine will. And once they have enjoyed it, what it means to live only to do my divine will, if not all, at least part of them shall return to the path of my volition. So he says, everything that I've manifested to you, Louisa, this knowledge will bring the desire to eat it. Uh, and once they have enjoyed it, the means to live only uh, to live in the divine will. And then he says this. This is the sad part if not everyone, at least part of them. So I, I remember um, the divine will is so magnificent, it is so beautiful, it is so holy, that if you don't go, go to your room, close the door and pray, if you don't, if you don't become little insignificant and hidden, if you, if you don't do this, what happens is, he says, it, it won't be everybody. It'll, it'll, at least it'll be part of them who will return to the path of living in the divine will. So he says, the two wills, the human and the divine, shall exchange the perennial kiss. Here's the kiss of heaven and earth. And there shall be no more dispute between the human will and that of God. After the, the many fruits had, it had given, my redemption shall give also the fruit of the fiat voluntas to on earth as it is in heaven. So redemption is still not done. Therefore, you, Louisa, be the first one to take this fruit and want no other food, no other life than my divine will alone. We want this bread of heaven. So when you, when you eat your bread, your daily bread, the third bread, say to Jesus, thank you for this food, but I want the bread of heaven. I want the bread of the divine will. When you have the second bread, the super substantial bread of the Holy Eucharist, you say, thank you, Jesus, for receiving you, Lord God Almighty, for this 15 minutes in a mystical way until the host is dissolved. But I want the bread of divine will forever, a perennial communion with you. When you make a spiritual communion, thank you, Jesus, that I can be in communion with you in a spiritual way. But I want the bread of heaven. I want that bread that, that you, Jesus, lived on, that Mary lived on, that Adam lived on before the fall. When we do this, uh, Jesus is so pleased. So we have to discipline ourselves to understand why we are here is to call the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, to be the voice of all mankind, begging God for this bread of the divine will. See, somebody's got to do it. And Jesus has said, I've waited 6,000 years to give these truths to my people through you, Louisa, so that they would accomplish their mission. What is your mission? What is your mission in the divine will? It's to go to your room, close the door, and pray. It is to be little, insignificant, and hidden. It is to beg God continuously for this bread of heaven. Therefore, you, Louisa, be the first one to take this fruit and want no other food nor any other life but that of my divine will alone. Again, there's saintly things, there's good things, there's holy things. I have a basement filled with books. And I told you about that. Last year, the, the, the pipes broke on one side, got all the books wet on this side. You know when, you know when a book is wet, how they just turns into a block? Well, I can't turn the page. And then the, the, the the pipe broke on the other side, and the books were all wet. It's hilarious. I was going to save them for like a seminary or something like that. God went, hey, 
Do you know what I'm going to bring upon the face of the earth? So that's what we have to do. We have to realize this book of heaven is spectacular. The saints would have fought for it. Can you imagine St. Thomas Aquinas with, be, be, by looking at his Summa compared to the book of heaven? Uh, he already said his Summa was worth, he says, it's just mere straw compared to what God is going to do. By 19, 7, 8, 26, you must know. And the, realize, the reason it's highlighted uh, like this is this is a command from Jesus Christ. And I think over there you, have a, you can get the book, You Must Know. It's wonderful. Listen to what Jesus says. He always says this. You must know that the first one, this, he's always talking about Louisa. You must know Louisa, the first one who must be the first to form a kingdom, to bring a good, to form a work, must suffer more than anyone and to do more than anyone. He must direct, facilitate things and means uh, prepare what is needed so that finding the raw materials of that work and seeing it done, others may imitate it. This is why much have I, God, given you, Louisa, to give you, Louisa, so that you, Louisa, may form the raw material for those souls, the little children of the Holy Divine Will, who must live in the kingdom of my divine will. I pray every day for, for um, three things. Two, the second one is for uh, the souls in purgatory. The third one is for the souls who must live in the divine will. That's us. It's not, he's not saying, I'm hoping. He says, no, you must live in the divine will. See, you've got to go back to our mission. What is our mission? It's to live in the divine will. It's more than to live in the divine will. We must live in the divine will. Therefore, be attentive. That means to read. Be disposed. That means to be little and significant and hidden of what I, God, give you and to do what I, God, want from you. This is your mission. He's saying to us, you must live in the divine will. Holy moly. <laughs> God is ready. Volume 19, 7, 11, 26. Therefore, it is necessary to make known how much this kingdom of the divine will cost me so that mankind might enter once again into the kingdom Adam had lost. Had I to sacrifice the little of his children of all souls. Uh, this is Louisa. Keeping her nailed to a bed for 40 years and more without air, without the fullness of light of the sun that everyone enjoys. How Louisa's little heart has been the refuge of my pains and of those of all souls. How Louisa has loved everyone. Louisa has prayed for everyone. Louisa has defended everyone. How many times Louisa has exposed herself to the blows of divine justice to defend all her brothers and sisters. Then, her intimate pains, the very privation of me that martyred her little heart, giving her continuous death. Jesus says that to Louisa. I, will, I crucify you every day. I want you dead every day to raise you up again. Can you imagine? She suffered the martyrdom of death every day. That's not you or me. You get, I, get a, I get a sliver, and I still got a sliver. You know, it's painful, and it's like, stop it. Jesus crucified her every day. She died every day. This is one of the things that the church is going to show about Louisa. That's why we love pa Father Bucci. He explains Louisa very, very well. Uh, he's he's read, write, writing another book on her. Um, it, it's very important that we get to know what she has gone through. It's very important. In fact, since she has known no other life but mine, this is Louisa, no other will but mine, all of these pains laid the foundation of the kingdom of my divine will. And like solar rays, here again she's the sun, as the Vatican has said, the matured fruits of the supreme fiat. 
So it is necessary to make known how much this kingdom costs you, Louisa, and me, so that from its cost they may know how much I, God, yearn for souls to acquire the divine will. And from the divine will, uh, it costs they may appreciate the divine will, love the divine will, aspire to enter, to live in the kingdom of my supreme will. Uh, again, uh, Louisa, no one has gone through what Louisa has gone through. Um, I remember Father Bucci says Aunt Rosaria would come into the room and the bed would be covered with blood, the floor would be covered with blood. She would see that she was crucified and she would run out of the room to grab, grab table towels. This happened numerous times. To come running back in to soak up the blood and Luis is there spotless. Uh, again, God allowed this. She, she, Jesus said to Lu, uh, Luisa said to Jesus, I, I'll, I'll accept uh, the stigmata if nobody knows. Jesus said, okay. It's only going to be the people that I let know, and he's letting the whole world know that uh, she suffered the, the stigmata. You know, this is something, one of the things that Aunt Rosaria helped her with is in doing the tumbleo, making those things, you have to pull and make the knots tight. And her hands were so painful that that's one of the things that uh, Father Bucci's aunt would do, is pull the, the knots tight because Louisa's hands were, were so filled with pain. Again, uh, he, what happens is this. When God sees a soul that he loves, he says to that soul, I want you to be more like me. And that's crucifixion. So when we have sufferings, uh, Jesus is saying, I want you to be more like me. Physical, spiritual, mental, emotional. Uh, again, don't complain about it. I know it's painful, but Jesus, thank you. Uh, a friend of mine who used to see Jesus every day uh, said, to, said to him that when you get to heaven, you're going to see what suffering meant. And you will want to come back to earth to suffer. And Jesus said to him, but I already gave you the opportunity to suffer. See, it's, we have to understand that suffering is redemptive. If you're going through something, this is a gift. It's a gift. And it might not seem like that. It might be too painful to realize it. But see, we go not by feelings. We go by the knowledge of the truth. That's what Jesus wants. Volume 19, 9, 12, 26. Can the supreme being ever separate, be separated from his will? The, all this is inseparable, indivisible. In the same way, everything that my divine will unites enters into the divine order and it becomes inseparable from me, Jesus. Inseparable from Jesus. This is what he wants. So how can I leave you? If it were not so, everything that my divine will has done in you, its crafting, its foundation, its very manifestations, would be a game, something superficial, a way of speaking, but not a reality. My daughter, my holy humanity possesses the kingdom of my divine will so much so that my whole life was dependent upon the divine will. And being dependent on the divine will, I, God, had the intelligence of the supreme volition, I had its gaze, I had its breath, I had its operating, I had its steps, I had its motion, I had its eternal heartbeat. In this way, I, God, formed the kingdom of the supreme fiat, its life and its goods, in my holy humanity. Do you see, then, what it means to form its kingdom in you? I, God, listen to this, must transmit to you, Louisa, what my holy humanity possesses. That's the image and likeness of Jesus. Which shall administer to you its divine thought, its divine gaze, its divine breath, and everything that I, Jesus, possess for the foundation of the divine will. See how much I love this kingdom. 
I, God, place my whole life, my pains, my death at its disposal as its foundation, guard, and defense, and support. I, God, shall leave nothing out of myself which, I, which shall not serve to maintain the triumph of the absolute dominion of my divine will in full vigor. Therefore, do not be surprised if you see the different stages of my age and of my works being as though repeated in you. You see me now as a child. You see me now young. You see me now crucified. This is the kingdom of my divine will present in you. This is my whole life line, lines up inside and outside of you. Louisa, you are the guard. You are the defense of my kingdom. Therefore, be attentive. And when some fear assails you, when some worry fails assails you, think that you are not alone but that you have my whole life as help to form this kingdom of mind within you and continue your flight constantly in the unity of the supreme light of the divine will. It is there that I, God, await you to give you my surprises in return, to give you my lessons. This is, this is what he's doing when we read the book of heaven. Our God has everything planned, and he does not want us to continue to live this human uh, will, the misery, the misery. He says, I don't want this anymore. I want you to be attentive. That means to read. I want you to recognize my life in you. So the gift that God gives in the divine will is by location. Okay? It's not like the bilocation of the saints. The gift of bilocation is this. When you pray the Holy Rosary with Mary, you go to Bethlehem with Jesus and Mary and Joseph and Louisa. You go to Capernaum uh, to be uh, with uh, the apostles as Jesus proclaims the kingdom. You go to uh, uh, Cana to be with Mary and Jesus and Louisa. Louisa's always there. That's, she's already been there. And we begin to see Jesus as a baby. We begin to see Jesus at, at the temple as a youth. We begin to see Jesus crucified. This is not pious thought. This is actuality. Again, how does this happen? Being alone with Jesus in your room reading. Let Jesus take you where he wishes. It's not you going to someone. It's Jesus coming to you, taking you to him, himself, to his mother. Uh, this is why the, uh, uh, the movie uh, of Mel Gibson, The Passion of the Christ, is, is important to... Be with Jesus in those last hours of his life. To see, just get a glimpse of what he's doing. So it will put you in the proper place to go to Golgotha. To be with Jesus. To see how much he loves us. He wanted his mother there to watch him die. He wants us there to watch him die. He wants to show us how much he loved us. That he shed every drop of his blood. He gives us the 24 hours of the passion. Not just to read, but to prepare ourselves to be with Jesus. This is what he's saying. He says, you see me now as a child, now as young, now crucified. He's not saying, use your imagination. He's saying, I will show you who I am. There's no time or space in the divine will. Again, you, begin, you have to begin to understand what bilocation means. It's not the bilocation of the saints. It's to let Jesus take you where he is. You say you love him, then you go with him. And it's only, it's only for a short period. Let God lead you, guide you directly, direct you. To himself. Look at you. We already do this with Our Lady. We look at Jesus through the eyes of the Blessed Mother when we pray the Holy Rosary. Let God lead, guide, and direct. Watch what he's going to do. Uh, again, 
No eye has seen, no ear has heard of what God is going to do for those who love him. Again, it's this is, as you read this, this is, like he says, I await you to give you my surprises in return. I await you to give you my lessons. What's he doing? He's waiting for us to go to our room, close the door, and pray. He's waiting for us to read. This is what it means to be attentive. Volume 19, 915, 1926. My daughter Louisa, this kingdom of the supreme fiat must first be well established, well formed, well matured between you and me. Okay, that's what happened when Louisa was on earth. And then, basically after you leave earth, then it must be transmitted to souls. And that's us. God, God has this planned. The same thing happened between the virgin and me. First, I was formed with her, within her. I grew within her womb. I was nursed at her breath, breast. We lived together and to form the kingdom of redemption between the two of us, one on one, as if no one else existed. And then my very life, the fruits of my redemption, which my life itself contained, were transmitted to other souls. So it shall be for the supreme fiat. First... We shall do it between the two of us only. And it's really between Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. He says, whenever I speak of myself, I'm always speaking of my mother. One on one. And this is where the braiding comes in. You have Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. The three are braided together. Uh, it's, and you don't know who is who after a while when you look at a braid. You don't know which part is from which part. He says, and then we shall, the two of us, only, one on one, and once it is formed, I, God, shall take care of transmitting it to souls. Who's doing this? It's Jesus. He's doing it. He says it right here. I'm going to transmit it to souls who can say fiat. It is easier to have a work come out well when it is formed in private in the hiddenness of the silence of two persons who really love that work. And once it is formed, it is easier to manifest it, to give it to others as gift. Therefore, let me do and do not be concerned. God has given this to us as a gift. We did not stay in bed for 64 years without eating, drinking, or sleeping. We did not have the, the stigmata. Uh, Louisa went through that. And now Jesus says, since one has done it, I can now give it to everyone. One human has, lived the, has possessed the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary. Can you imagine? Uh, Father Bucci says, Louisa was known as Louisa the Santa, Louisa the Saint. And he says, one day the church will describe Louisa as the saint of the church. All that the saints have done was basically prepare the way for what? For the saint. The one who is in Jesus' true image and likeness. The one who is in Our Lady's true image and likeness. Uh, again, and he says, then he gives it to us as a gift. We have done nothing. All that he asks of us to do is say fiat. Fine, 20, 10, 6, 26. Do you not want then to compensate my divine will for everyone, all these lives that the creatures had cut off from it? In order to do this, you must suffer, Louisa. Not a pain, but a lack of divine life. That is my privation. In order to form its kingdom in you, Louisa, my divine will wants to find in you, Louisa, all the satisfactions that all the creatures have not given to the divine will, all of its lives, that it was to make a rise in them. Otherwise, it could not be a kingdom without foundation, without giving it the rights of divine justice, without the due reparations. Know, however, that your Jesus shall not leave you for too long, because I too know that you, Louisa, listen to this, cannot live under the press of such a hard martyrdom. What was her martyrdom? She didn't see Jesus. See, this is not a vision. It's not a locution. It's not an apparition of the saints. 
she saw Jesus. And Jesus was her life. And without Jesus, she was dying. Without Jesus, she says, I, I have nothing. I, I'm not alive. I can't breathe. I can't, my heart can't beat without you, Jesus. You know, I've met visionaries. They, they live quite well uh, without seeing their apparition. This is not an apparition. This is not a vision. This is not a locution. You must know, and here again Jesus is commanding us, that what I, God, make you write on paper, I myself first wrote in the depth of your soul. When I, God, made you put it on paper, even more, there are more gifts, uh, excuse me, there are more things written in you than on paper. Now think about this. Uh, Jesus shows us that the 36 volumes, which are so beautiful, so amazing, are really the drops of water that are coming off of Louise's body as she exits the infinite ocean of divine love. We haven't seen anything. See, Jesus wants us to read the book of heaven to be so enamored by these truths that we want to hang on to Louisa to dive into this infinite ocean, never to surface, to always be with God. Therefore, when you feel the need to go over again what regards the truths of the supreme fiat, just take a look into your interior and immediately you shall see again what you want. And so that you may be uh, sure that of what I am telling you, I am telling you, look right now into your soul and you shall see all, all in order what I, Jesus, have manifested to you, Louisa. She's the, Jesus says she, this is one of her titles, 2,200 titles. Jesus says to Louisa, you are the redemptrix of my fiat. Which means, no one can have this, the Holy Spirit without you. You are the savior of sanctification. You are the human who I have given this gift to. What Jesus and Mary have done, yes, we have the saints, but we haven't had Louisa. Now we have Louisa, the redemptrix of my fiat. And so what he says to her is, you are the cathedra of the divine will. You are the seat of the divine will. We already know Our Lady is the seat of wisdom. The bishop has the cathedra in his cathedral. That's his chair as bishop. Louisa is the cathedra of the divine will. We go to Louisa. When you're having a question with Louisa uh, about the divine will, go to Louisa and ask her, Louisa, explain this to me. Volume 20, uh, 10, 12, 26. Firstborn daughter, my divine will, why are you so oppressed? If you think of your great fortune, your opposition shall depart from you. That's the same thing for us. There's nothing for us to be depressed about or worried about. Jesus has given us the book of heaven. Jesus has given us little Louisa as our mother of the little children of the Holy Divine Will. Jesus has given us the, the, this gift of gifts, this prodigy of prodigies. Uh, again, we shouldn't be oppressed by anything. Then he says this about Louisa, and this is for us to understand. Do you know what firstborn daughter of my divine will means? It means first daughter in the divine love of our celestial father. The first daughter among all to be loved. It means first daughter of divine grace, of divine light, first daughter of divine glory, first daughter of divine possessor of all the divine riches of our divine father, first daughter of creation. As firstborn daughter of the supreme will, Louisa contains all the bonds, all the relations, all the rights that befit a firstborn daughter. Bonds of daughtership, relations of, of communication to all the dispositions of our celestial father, the rights of possession of all his divine goods. But this is not all. Do you know what first daughter delivered by my holy divine will means? It means not only to be first in the love and in the all of the things of her creator, but to enclose within herself all the divine love and all the divine goods of all the other children, past, present, and future. 
So if the others shall possess each one in his own part, Louisa, as firstborn, shall possess altogether the goods of all the other souls, past, present, and future. And this by right with divine justice, because as firstborn to to Louisa did my divine will entrust everything. To Louisa did my divine will give everything. Therefore, in Louisa's acts, therefore in Louisa, all the origin, all, excuse me, therefore in Louisa is all the origin of all things, uh, the cause for which creation was created, the purpose for which the divine action and eternal love entered the field. Louisa, who was the, to be the firstborn daughter of our divine will. Louisa, was the prime cause of all the works of a God. Therefore, as a consequence of from her, derive all goods. From Louisa do they come, and, from, and to Louisa do they return. See, this is, a st- this is a human. My goodness. See then how fortunate you are. And it's, that's what he's saying to us. We have Louisa. You cannot fully comprehend what it means to have primacy in love and in all things Uh, of your creator. Uh, Again, as you enter into this gift, everything begins to change. So we'll end there for 15 minutes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we will be back next week, Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Central, for Lesson 5 of 6, of this uh, beautiful series, Louisa and the Foundation of the Divine Will. Have a wonderful week. Fiat.